Both of these programs started playing basketball in 1898. Neither program has ever had a basketball game on Christmas Day until right now. Off we go, and it is the Badgers who have lost their last 12 here at the Breslin Center who control the opening tip. Coming off the win against Nebraska Tuesday where they started out slow but in Wisconsin fashion got a 67-53 victory with a great defensive effort. And there's an early turnover as Micah Potter steps on the inline. Well, and defensively, you know what to expect from Wisconsin. They're going to eat into the shot clock a little bit, force you to have to guards both, guard both sides of the floor, and they're not going to make the little mental mistakes. So good start for Michigan State to get the stop early. Let's see what happens on the offensive end on this possession. Meanwhile, Michigan State, they allowed Northwestern to shoot 53% in that loss on Sunday. Inside, there's a good start, nice reverse for Thomas Kithier. Well, you like that too because it was an in close pick and roll. The pass was on time. The one thing Aaron Henry allowed Kithier to do was create some space before the pass got to him. And active on defense, Michigan State again forcing a turnover. But Thomas Kithier, he's only scored 20 points on the entire season, Jimmy. Well, here's the thing, Aaron Henry. Patient, allow Kithier to set the screen first of all. That way now you attract his defender to him, roll to the basket. The pass was on time on target. Nice two points inside. Tom Izzo said his assistants actually discussed with him about maybe moving Kithier out of the starting lineup, but he said now he does too many things well, but this time he misses the hook. Well, but also coaches are trying to figure out too, and especially with this Michigan State team, just who they are, just because you didn't have a lot of time. And a great turnover defense right here by Michigan State. And that was all started by Kithier. And then Kithier kept it alive there, and it went out of bounds off of Wisconsin. So a good start for the junior from Clarkston, Michigan. Yeah, you know, Aaron Henry right there in transition, he missed a couple of those in the Northwestern game where he didn't finish at the rim. Um, so let's keep our eye on that, because that's a transition basket that normally he would complete. Here's Langford, and he misses it off the heel. The very experienced Langford, who will turn 24 in a couple of weeks. Of course, missed all that time with a couple of foot surgeries, but he's back out here this year for Tom Isbell. Well, it's so good to see Joshua back on the court, feeling good about himself. More importantly, his body and his mind is where he needs it to be. And ultimately, he's going to step into that leadership role. Wisconsin, one of the slowest teams as far as tempo goes in the country, but they're having trouble figuring out this Michigan State defense. Shot clock violation as Demetric Trice knocked it free from Langford. And Tom Izzo has to like this start. Three turnovers already for the Wisconsin Badgers. Well, you just have to stay disciplined in your defensive principles because one thing that Wisconsin will do, they'll grind you out mentally, force you to make a defensive mistake, then that's when they take advantage of you. Again, the possessions are going to be less, so the emphasis is, is on defensively, not giving up high-quality shots, and offensively, taking care of your business, not turning the ball over. But here is a turnover for Michigan State, so a little sloppy through the first two plus. And Greg Gard, Big Ten Coach of the Year. Talked to him yesterday on the Zoom call. He was in his hotel room here in East Lansing watching Elf, fittingly, on Christmas Eve. <laughs> Don't worry, Badger fans. He was watching film as well. It was just that Elf was on in the background. Micah Potter trying to back down Kithier. Patient. And we have a foul on the floor against Thomas Kithier. Well, one thing Kithier gives you as well is that the Arding Potter, you don't have to calm down and double team as much. Kithier has size and knowledge and understanding of how to guard. So now that allows your defense to stay, to stay solid. Coming in off the bench, Trevor Anderson will inbound. It's a guy that Greg Gard says we increase our RPMs when he comes into the game. And another foul up top as Reaver started to drive it on Joey Hauser. But this Wisconsin team, Jimmy, I mean, they're always experienced. But they have six seniors, four of them redshirt seniors. Well, in, in a year like we've all experienced, okay, with COVID, I think the teams that have that senior, junior, senior leadership are able to adapt a lot quicker 
because they've been in the system, they don't have to teach as much. So the advantage goes to a team like Wisconsin and Ford inside over a smaller Langford. As long as your health is in place, you do the things necessary, they're always going to have an advantage. And you see the difference is Michigan State wants to speed it up a little bit, but Henry misses at the bucket. One of the beautiful, beautiful thing about this Wisconsin team is if you want to play fast, they don't. Yep. And Aline Ford, who turned 23 on Tuesday, a little happy belated birthday, he's got the last five. And out of bounds, so it was Wisconsin with the early turnovers, and now Michigan State has committed the last couple miscues. Well, coaches always say, look, I want you to play quick, not fast, in regards to your thinking. That time, Aaron Henry did not allow Marble to get set. So he's anticipating that he's going to be there, releases the pass too soon, hence another turnover. And again, it's a lean forward. He's got all seven for Wisconsin. Yeah. And great teams, when you make a miscue, a mistake, they make you pay for it. Wisconsin, once again, taking advantage on the offensive end. A slow start really hampered Michigan State against Northwestern. A slow start here, but that helps. Three-pointer for Rocket Watts. Here is Trevor Anderson giving it off to Potter. In Wisconsin will milk that shot clock. Davison driving and mm. somehow got it up over the long arm of Gabe Brown. But the discipline that time and the awareness to come to a jump stop, okay? That allowed him to, to gather himself, create a little space, and now softly kiss it off the glass against a taller opponent. Wisconsin four for four from the floor. Every time they haven't turned it over, they're scoring the basketball. Just inside the arc again, it's Watts. This time, no good. It pinballs around. Offensive rebound, Malik Hall. Patient, missed it. Fight for the board, and it will belong to the Badgers. First media timeout. They are in attendance, and we tell you this, time to enter the Fox Super 6 College Basketball Contest, brought to you by Credible for a chance to win a $10,000 prize. Download the free app and answer six questions about the Wisconsin-Michigan State game for your chance to win. Someone's going to have a Merry Christmas. That's right. Brandon Gordon, Jimmy Jackson back with you from East Lansing, Wisconsin, mm. four for four from the field, but they have had some careless turnovers. Yeah, and that was just a rare miscue. Ford looking inside, could not get it. Then Wall kind of back cut, so a little miscommunication on the offensive end coming out that timeout. Right into the paint. That's a tough shot. Julius Marble, though, got it to drop. Yeah, but Lawyer put the pass right on time. Marble extended his left hand to the baseline, and on the catch, he was able just to turn and shoot. Foster Lawyer, number three for the Spartans, coming in off the bench, playing the backup point guard role. Of course, that's a big void from last year with Cassius Winston no longer in the program. Trevor Anderson trying to drive it on Lawyer. Kicks it up top. Three on the way. And the three drops down for Potter. Yeah, how about having an outlet like that? A Potter that can step back and just stroke it from beyond deep. That's the thing with their bigs. Potter and Reavers, they can both get you inside and out, Jimmy. Well, excellent post-up positioning right there by Marvel the second, Able to get that jump hook. And Potter right here relocating. Squaring up his shoulders and feet. Able to knock in that three from deep. Wisconsin is a team 42% from three. Potter himself just below 50% on the year. That is going to be a big strength for them all season. And this is a guy in Aaron Henry that has been a big strength for Tom Izzo. Tom Izzo saying the junior is by far playing his best basketball in a Spartan uniform. Yeah, and it's not just from a points perspective, but understanding, you know, how to be a leader emotionally, physically. Understanding his placement on the basketball court and playing intelligent basketball, which then leads to him being more efficient this year as a player. And he has been. His numbers are up in every category. Three-point shot this time off the mark. Davison chases after it, and he knocks it out. Good hustle that time by Davison. But and back to Henry, I think his he has more to give though. His potential, I think, is off the charts. And again, sometimes that. Guys get it early. Some guys you can see it. Some guys kind of blend into it. And I think he's still growing because he has so much more, I think, within his arsenal 
that he has um, as of yet unleashed. Thought about going to the NBA, but withdrew his name in early August, and here he is mm. just inside the arc. So right on time. And sometimes even going through the process of putting your name in, you can learn a little bit about what the scouts and the big boys are thinking about and what you need to work on. And you take that back so you can improve upon your skill set. And a whistle and a foul as Trevor Anderson started to make his way toward the bucket. I think a lot of guys, Jimmy, are doing that now. They know that they can test the waters mm -hmm. free of charge and at least get that feedback. Well, why wouldn't you? But here's the thing, and the challenge is a lot of times with these young men, coaches, parents, friends are going to tell you all this stuff. And sometimes coaches are going to tell you stuff you don't want to hear. But when you hear it from that third or fourth party, the guys that really do it, now it has a little bit more credence and substance to it. And I think that really helps a young man ultimately develop himself as a player. Shot clock down at five. Trice off the dribble. And into the hands of Joey Hauser. And Joey Hauser mm. lost it into the backcourt, but it was tapped, so no backcourt violation. Hauser, the native of Stevens Point, Wisconsin. Transferred from Marquette. And here he is with a post touch. Leaning in and getting the bucket. You mentioned he injured that knee against Northwestern, but good to go and looking good there. Well, but good, good patience. A lot of times when you have a mismatch small on big or big on small, you kind of rush the situation. That time, Hauser was very patient, identified the middle of the lane as the opening, knowing that Davidson was no match for his size. Does have a brace on that left knee, Joey Hauser. And now, Davidson's going to fight you inside. He's not going to make it easy, but right here, Hauser dribbling, excellent footwork, able to step right through and just play that soft touch once he got in the lane. Leading Michigan State in points and rebounds. Tom Izzo said he wasn't so sure about the knee on Wednesday. Didn't look that great in practice, but Thursday, yesterday, looked really good. In the corner, Demetri Trice knocking it down. Very nice out of bounds play that time. Trice able to turn right into his jump shot in the corner. And the equalizer <laughs> on the other end for Josh Langford, and we're tied at 15. So good to see. Michigan State started one of five, but they are five of seven since, and they made four straight. Reavers trying to go to work on Hauser. Well, that's an NBA fade, little Novitski, but he missed it short. Rocket Watts lost it going up. Here's the speedy athletic freshman, Johnny Davis. Nice finish. Jonathan Davis. Identified exactly where Aaron Henry was coming from, used his right shoulder to keep Henry off and then able to lay it up with his left hand. And here's a steal by Trice. He's got Davis if he wants him. Davis says, I'll take it anyway. But he has it knocked out of bounds. And we've got a timeout. With yeah, Merry Christmas. Happy holidays to everybody. Foster lawyer, his family in attendance. This is the first game that families have been able to come here. There they are. They've made the trek over from Clarkston, Michigan. And these two programs I mentioned, Jimmy, first time they played on Christmas, but both coaches told us the guys were saying, look, if we have to be with the team on Christmas, we might as well play. Well, yeah, and, and you know, these unfortunate young men wouldn't be able to go home, so why not be able to enjoy it playing the game that you love on Christmas and providing entertainment to so your foul inside? I think they're going to get a flop warning a flop. on Nate Reavers. Yeah. yeah. And the Hauser family here as well. So at least for the first time, these folks get to see their kids play this year. Yeah, yeah, in person, get a chance to see and feel. I mean, yeah, it's not normal, but the good thing about us being people and nerves is we just make adjustments. I don't think anything about this year has been normal, but we're almost through it, folks. Driving inside, Tyler Wall can't get it to fall. Yeah, good move by Wall that time, just not able to complete the play. Great pass, easy lay in, Hauser. And that's when the Rocket Watts keep it simple. That time in transition, the nice bounce pass to allow Hauser now just to catch, pick up, and finish. The simple plays to me. 
Rutgers wall again against Hauser. Mm. Nice reverse for the sophomore from Lakeville, Minnesota. Yeah, you got to keep your head on the swivel with this Wisconsin team. Cutting back door, now you're able to get inside wall. That time completed the play. And on the other end, going right down to Julius Marble. Marble, four points. He's only given him four a game. His best game was actually their win over Duke. He had a career-high 12 in 12 minutes, and that's kind of sparked his playing time since then. Davison. Boy, Wisconsin, they're just never rushed, are they? They're not, but you see the footwork, too. Uh, you know, the footwork is important, but let's go back to that transition play. Not trying to be spectacular, but keep it simple. The pass was there. Outstanding job. That time also by Hauser being able to run exact right down the middle of the floor. And what you do, you want to always reward your big man for making that kind of effort. At the line, Davison. You know, you said at the top of the broadcast about Rocket Watts, and Tom Izzo said he's making that transition from a two-guard to a one-guard. The point guard's not natural for him. How hard is that, especially to fill the shoes of Cassius Winston? Well, just to play period, because in high school, you're accustomed to when I want to score, I can go score. If I want to make up plays, I can't. But at this level, in particular with this program, you have to be able to do everything from the point guard position. You got to get guys in their place. You got to know where everybody is supposed to be. Deliver the ball on time and on target. Defend all these responsibilities. He has it within his repertoire. He just has to be comfortable doing it consistently. These offenses are heating up. Pretty play there from Malik Hall on the baseline. He's talking about upside Malik Hall. Has the ability to be a really good one here in the green and white. Ford, he had the hot start. He hasn't scored since. He still has seven. Aaron Henry. Contact counter. Blocking foul. A little bit of a circus shot, but it worked all the same for the junior from Indianapolis. Well, a uh, smart play. Watts. Gives it up right when Henry needs it. Not too early, not too late. That allowed the defense. They weren't set yet. And how about Henry here with the right hand taking the contact, able to finish for a conventional three-point play. And that is the lead right now for Michigan State. Back and forth we go in a top 15 matchup on Christmas Day. Johnny Davis lost it. Now they're going to get a foul, though, against Gabe Brown. We'll take a look and see if Gabe is a little out of position right here with the uh, with the inside left forearm got into the body of Davis. Wisconsin down three, but eight of 14 from the floor. Much better than their one of 16 start against Nebraska. Trice driving inside. Had the mismatch. Took it right to Marble, but missed it off the window. Baseline drive. Lawyer. Opposite corner. Hall got in the air. Really had nowhere to go. Here's Marble with Potter. Throws it away underneath. And that pass should have been made to the baseline side. So Malik Hall could have caught it and finished, but excellent recovery that time defensively by the Badgers. Five turnovers now, and it turns into three points for Micah Potter, his second triple. And once again, the Badgers, veteran savvy team, you turn it over, they're going to make you pay on the offensive end. Potter, leader in points and rebounds. Last year was the sixth man, but now he's doing it all this season and another bad pass. Corner three, Trice, book it, and Wisconsin is back up. And now that's 12 points off of six turnovers by Michigan State. And coaches look at it and say, if we can get a point of turnover, we're doing good. Right now they're getting two points for every turnover by the Spartans. Turnovers have been an issue. There's another one. Michigan State averaging 14 a game. They already had seven. A foul underneath. And we'll stay on this end as we go to a break.
How about Northwestern? You mentioned it, but not only did they beat Michigan State, they followed that up with a win against Indiana. They're 2-0 in the league. Well, they are. I mean, and again, it, that young core is finally coming together for Coach Collins, and they were able to prove it. They took care of their business at home against a formidable Michigan State team, and then they carried that momentum forward against a tough Indiana team on the road. That was the only loss for Michigan State. Wisconsin's only loss at the buzzer to Marquette. Aline Ford is having a nice start here. Nine points. Langford tried to force the issue, and it works out beautifully. Quickly up the court, Langford. Probably a tougher shot than he imagined, but able to rise up over the top to be able to knock it in. Already had 13 guys score here, so very much in the spirit of Christmas sharing. Two-pointer, and it drops for Demetric Trice. He's got a... Well, a beautiful escape dribble that time by Demetric, able to get his feet set, then the escape dribble, one dribble right into a shot. Of course, Demetric's brother, Travis, starred for Michigan State, helped lead him to a Final Four in 2015, and there he is. He's in the building. Checking out baby bro. And... Most fans know this, but your son, Trey, he played on the other side for the Wisconsin Badgers. Yeah, and actually, with Travis Trice, they played AU ball together um, back in Ohio. So I've been knowing the Trice family for quite some time, so it's great to see that both young men have been able to kind of live up their dreams. And again, Demetrius still doing his thing. So. Yeah. yeah, Tom Izzo said... I didn't recruit Demetric. I didn't know that he was good enough as a senior in high school. That was one of my biggest recruiting blunders. <laughs> Sometimes you just don't always get it right. <laughs> Rocket Watts floats it up. Mm. How about a strong offensive rebound? Look at Gabe Brown flexing his muscle. Unfortunately, though, Malik Hall injured on the play. He might have taken an elbow up around the face. Maybe on the back end of this play, right there mm -hmm. and it's by his own teammate and again that's just being in the wrong place at the wrong time able to shake it off you know, Gabe Brown with the hustle just unfortunately came down with that I believe it was his left elbow right there so Hall will take a seat he was really the lone little bright spot against Northwestern. Ten points, nine rebounds, three assists. They're going to check him out. Potter driving. Well, he hits two threes, and then he takes you off the dribble. Well, you know, that play was opened up because Davison curled so tight, he kind of took the defender. I think there was Bingham with him a little bit, which opened up the space for Potter to pop, pump, fake, and get inside. Both teams shooting 60% or better from the floor. These offenses are very efficient as Hauser hits. Uh, Michigan State is saying that if you don't turn it over, <laughs> you got a chance to be, you know, efficient and successful in the offensive end of the court. Uh, Wisconsin 12-4, points off turnovers. Here's Davison fading, hitting. You, you know, one thing I love about this Badger team is you see guards posting up which is unconventional in a lot of senses where you don't really see post-ups as much anymore. But to be able to get your guards down in the block, kind of get dirty a little bit, uh, I love to see it. May have gotten away with a travel there, Bingham, but he missed the shot. And Davison is not afraid to post up like he did the last time down the floor. Here he is outside the arc. On the block against Hauser. Davison, deep three. Rebound comes out to Trevor Anderson. Reload, Demetri Trice. Anderson, step back. Short. But still, Wisconsin, five of ten from three. Gosh, their game against Louisville when they won by 37, they were 16 of 25 from deep. And Trevor Anderson, see a nice three-point shot right there, but Trevor Anderson on the other end was 6 of 7 from the three-point line coming in, so not accustomed to seeing him miss <laughs> from behind the arc. And we saw Anderson miss and then Hauser make. Those two guys played in high school together. Right. 
In fact, Trevor Anderson's dad was the head coach of that team at Stevens Point High School. His dad, Scott. And Trevor actually was out on the recruiting trail when both houses were leaving. Oh, see a foul right there, Marquette. We'll tell you more about those connections when we get back to East Lansing. These offenses showing up, entertaining first half. They've been together since birth, Jimmy. Well, I mean, they have, and like I said, the recruiting trail, Trevor, trying to get both brothers to come over to Wisconsin. And, and don't get it twisted now. See Langford with the tough shot and Trevor on defense. Trevor in high school put up 2,300 points, over 2,300 points. Former, you know, named Mr. Uh, basketball in Wisconsin. So you may not see it at times out here being aggressive, but the man was, was balling in high school. <laughs> Yeah, Trevor started his career at Green Bay and then to your point mm -hmm. transferred in but you said it Joey Hauser and Sam Hauser now at Virginia They got recruited twice to go to Wisconsin <laughs> great guard recruited them out of high school And then when they transferred away from Marquette, he was hoping to get The Hausers, but they did not end up there instead one in Virginia and one at Michigan State Now Trevor's actually two years older than Joey. It's Sam that is the same age as Trevor, but all three of them inseparable. Right. Lifelong friendships. And neat that they won two state titles together with Trevor's dad, Scott, as the head coach at Stevens Point. Down the lane, little floater, beautiful Rocket Watts. Well, the patience that time by Watts. He allowed the play to kind of formulate. The first option, section, second option, didn't get stopped, was able to hit that floater right in the lane. And you got to think that Tom Izzo likes this start for his point guard. Well, well he does. Right here, he allowed the, the the key is when you're running in the pitch and roll, especially with Malik Hall or Biggs, you want to allow him to get set. That way they don't pick up the foul. But then, now you can rub your man off of him. And if you can clear the corner, now you put the defense in a situation where you have the advantage. So that time, excellent patience by Watts. And Watts already has tied his career high with six assists, Jimmy, and we've only played 17 minutes. Well, but it's been his steady play, not trying to do too much. He's taking shots and opportunities that are presented to him. He's not trying to force things again. The evolution of playing point guard is not immediate. Sometimes it takes a little longer. But if he can play like this and continue to get better, watch out. 38-35, inside of three minutes left in the half. Both teams still shooting right around 60%. This time, Watts short from 15. Here comes Trice. He's got nine in the first half. Little floater. Rebound comes down to Julius Marble. Gabe Brown, you got to watch him. He can shoot it from deep, nearly 50%. Marble has a mismatch inside. See if they can recognize it as he has the freshman Jonathan Davis on him. Yeah, he's over there on the right side, but they're on the other end with Rocket Watts. Shot clock at three. Josh Langford fading. And over the back went Gabe Brown. And that was just good team defense overall by the Badgers kind of closing in those narrow gaps where Michigan State thought they could kind of penetrate into but yet they saw a, a red jersey right in front of them Tom Izzo taking his team to 22 straight NCAA tournaments and on the other side Wisconsin although obviously a lot of them were under Bo Ryan Gray Guard and company, they've only missed one tournament in the last couple of decades. We said it at the top of the broadcast, that the two most consistent programs, I think, in the Big Ten the last 20 years. Well, they have, and they've won, I think, Michigan State six Big Ten championships in Wisconsin and Ohio State right behind them with five, I believe it is. But it's been the ability to recruit the kind of players that you need, but also develop young talent. And, and you know to be able to weather a storm when you lose some key components whether that's injury or graduation um, To not have a big drop-off and that's the key whether you win it every year 
And there's some things you can't control, but are you competitive year in and year out? I think we can answer that question and say yes for these two programs. Absolutely. Nobody more consistent than that man. Fouls a little bit of a story here in the first half. Tom Izzo's crew has picked up 10 of them. That's the sixth foul on Wisconsin. So both teams shooting for the final 139. Paul hands to Henry. He'll take that all day. He loves the mid-range. Well, a misdirection play that time underneath out of bounds. And you always want to look at ways to utilize scoring opportunities, side out of bounds, underneath that time. A very well executed play by Michigan State to get the bucket by Henry. Badgers, a little bit of a dry spell. They've missed their last four shots. But they only have one turnover after four in the first three minutes. Late shot clock inside the arc. Johnny Davis, no good. Strong rebound, Henry. And Tom Izzo says, come over here, Foster Lawyer. We're going to take a timeout. Closing moments of the first half when we get back to the Breslin Center. Drew Brees, I mean, Michael, is Michael Thomas, is he able to play? Well, they don't have, they've got a lot of injuries yeah, exactly. aside for the Saints, but they've been the go-to team. I are. Minnesota is oh, fighting for a playoff spot as Joey Hauser gets bumped. And he'll head to the charity strike. Mel Tucker, football coach. He's got no a cutout. Yeah. I like all the cardboard cutouts. I do. It's different, you know, but, you know, you try to do what you can within the confines of what you have available. Kirk Gibson right there, you know. And on down the line. You know, but it's, it's interesting, though, as basketball players, kind of once you get into the arena, yeah, it feels different not having fans, but once you get up and down and start playing, it just becomes basketball. You know, and that's, that's the beauty of the game. All tied at 39. Trice being traced by Henry. Now the switch to Hauser. Let's see if he tries to drive it on Joey Hauser. No, he kicks it off. Davison, deep three. Yes. Six of 11 from deep for Wisconsin. And big shot that time by, by the Badgers. Do the Spartans have the answer? Lawyer top of the arc. Yes. All tied at 42. What an entertaining first half at East Lansing. Consistent this Michigan State team will ultimately become. He's the hardest working player. Brought you by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. And he helped Michigan State have 13 assists on their 17 made field goals. That's a staple under Coach Izzo. Very good distributing the basketball. Missing the shot here, but an offensive rebound and a kick out to Josh Langford. Michigan State is 5 of 5 from long range. And how many times do we see it, Brandon, where it's a missed shot, the defense is scrambling, you kick it out to one of your teammates for an open three-point shot. And Michigan State has the lead. Wisconsin 15 of 28 from the floor, 6 of 11 from deep in the first half. Trice... 11 points to lead the way and he's got the ball but a bad pass six turnovers remember wisconsin had four turnovers on their four first possessions and only had one turnover the final 17 minutes of the half well how do you close out halves michigan state able to rally with a nice little run at the end not down to three tie the game beginning of the second half excellent play out of the break three-point shot and then a defensive play forcing the turnover whether it was mental or not on wisconsin <laughs> michigan state still chalks it up to great defense rocket watts six assists already down inside open kithier and he reverses it up and in outstanding spacing that time by the spartans along allow kithier to get to the baseline and how about the pass the bounce pass to skip it inside. I think that was from Hauser. It was from Hauser. Now dating back to the first half, an 8-0 Michigan State run. 
But a foul inside away for the ball. Well, look at the spacing. The ball moves from left to right. Okay, little pick and roll. But zoom, pass. Don't think about it. He's open. Get the ball inside. Again, pass. If he's there, able to get him. That's a two-handed <laughs> skip bounce pass by Joey Hauser. Averages a couple assists a game. That was his first. Who almost stepping into the backcourt, Nate Reavers. Well, how about the job that they've done on Nate Reavers? The 0 for 1, now not allowing him to get comfortable in deep touches in the post. So excellent job of sticking to your game plan of the scouting of not allowing Reavers to get and touch the basketball. And he misses here, so now he's 0 for 2 from the floor, but another offensive rebound. This one by Potter. Davison never shy to let it fly, but it's in and out. Langford, boy, that's pretty, but he missed it. So good with that step back mid range, though. He is. Good contest that time, too, by Ford, though. Davison finding Reavers. Can he get his first bucket? Not there. Good luck, though. But that's the look you want, you know. Baseline, the pass is back out. Reavers able to locate it, just not able to knock it in. You know, if you're Wisconsin, for Reavers, you would love to see him either get something easy, just to see the ball trickle through the net, or get to the free throw line. That way you can develop some kind of rhythm in your sight lines of seeing the ball go in can loosen you up and have you relax a little bit. Aaron Henry, we've seen him hit the mid-range. We've seen him hit outside and now taking it to the post. Another excellent executed side out of bounds play for Michigan State right into a basket. Largest lead of the game for either team. Davidson can't stop the 10-0 run. Ball bounces around to Henry. Michigan State trying to put some distance between themselves and the Badgers. Hauser, kick out. Watts, step back three, in and out. But how about the tap out by Kithier? At that time, he was not able to get up underneath Kithier. Kithier smartly knew he couldn't himself guard the rebound, but tipped it back out. Michigan State hit their first five threes. They missed their last two. Shot clock dwindling. Two defenders there. Hauser powers it up and gets fouled. That's a tough play because the shot clock is going down. Excellent rotation on the baseline that time by Demetri Trice. But then the foul at the end with the body negates that would have could have been what it could have been <laughs> what should have been a very good defensive possession by the Badgers and Joey Hauser heads to the line where he's 70 percent a shade under there this season three for three from the line today there's the family Joey Hauser, he was so excited to play his brother Sam at Virginia, but that Michigan State-Virginia game, yeah. unfortunately, due to COVID, was canceled December 9th. It's funny, talking to Joey's father, he, I said, how's Sam? He said, Sam is doing good, and Sam needed to go to, I think, that discipline kind of program in Virginia to kind of think different, to feel different. It's funny that you mentioned that, Mich that Virginia game, Michigan State. Talking to Coach Isler, he said, that's a game we wanted to have because it would have taught us the discipline we needed playing against a Wisconsin team because Virginia forces you to have to be methodical in your approach. You say methodical, oh, my God, Trice. Did they need that. That yes. stops the run, and Trice has been the guy. He's got 14 now. Kick up top, and there's Trice defensively. He is doing it all. Driving to the basket, and the foul against Rocket Watts. Demetri Trice, though, Jimmy, keeping a minute. Play against him when he came back with the Lakers. But in the summer times, we would play. See, Mateen Cleans, my guy, Smitty, Scott Skiles. In the summertime, we would play at UCLA. The great thing about Magic is this. He never lost. Because every time the, it, it was game point, and Magic had the ball. If he didn't score, he called a foul every time. <laughs> Why does that not surprise me? Man, every I was like, man, you, you just have to be on this team. Because <laughs> if not, you were not going to win that game. Man. <laughs> Wisconsin back within six after dropping down nine here. And a hold. As Marble was 
grabbing Micah Potter. A beautiful slipstream that time. It's almost like a double curl. Potter knowing that Marble was trailing instead of going to the pick, able to slip down the lane and pick up that foul. And Demetri Trice, can he get two more? He can, and he will. 16 for the redshirt senior. Yeah, quick hitting play. I like that. Just a handoff. What well, pass inside, then a handoff. Trice able to just a two dribble turn the corner. Maybe one dribble on that one, Brandon. And Michigan State still up four despite struggling in the turnover category. As Henry puts in two more in the paint. Well, and you're Michigan State. This is the pace you want. You score about 82 points a game. Wisconsin limits his team so far to about 57, 58. So, pace of play is trending towards what the Spartans want to accomplish. And the shooting has cooled down somewhat. Wisconsin was up around 60 percent. Now they're down at 49. You can just tell though, Trice, he came to play. This time though, a little bit too much off the window. Up ahead, Rocket Watts, cross court skip, pass deflected. And then a foul by Johnny Davis after he couldn't get the steal. Almost another steal. That's really been the story. Wisconsin has six steals in their 14 6 and points off turnovers. Yeah, well, but the problem is these passes here. We saw one by Marble uh, up top when Trice was able to steal it. You got to see through the defense. Don't assume that the pass is there. The defense, this is an outstanding position defensive team where they're in their spots, meaning the Badgers. So. Don't assume that those gaps are open. Look through the defense to see or the offense to see the defense. Put on the line for Gabe Brown, a great three-point shooter, but he can't get that one. Good close off right there. I'm the lead call on wall. And again, Hansey, four fouls this half now for Michigan State, this time on Marble. Yeah, and if you're Wisconsin, you want to continue to be aggressive. Listen, you know, from a free throw percentage, you're first in the Big Ten shooting 77%. So, you, but you balance yourself. You know you have four fouls. Continue to be aggressive. See if you can get yourself in the penalty early in the second half. Two of the top teams, free throw shooting. 77%, like you said, for Wisconsin. 75% on the year for Tom Izzo's crew. Trice again. He has scored 11 of the last 15 for Wisconsin. Man, he is feeling it here today. Well, but, but it's a simple play. It's an inside out with Potter. That time, Langford kind of inched in just a little bit and a little slow on the recover right here. Now you draw in the help. Quick pass out. Trice feet set. Langford just a little bit too late on that closeout. And the foul, so he goes to the line and hits the free throw. He's got 20. That's a season high. He also is one three-pointer away from his 200th three made in his career. Spinning a little out of control. Travel, Malik Hall, ninth turnover for Spartans. Yeah, Coach Izzo, just slow down. Slow down. Right. Another empty offensive possession for the Spartans here goes Dimitri Trice downhill again two more it's too easy he scored all 10 Wisconsin points this half and nearly another turnover Brown Spartans offense looking stagnant. Lawyer resets. Lawyer crossover in the lane. Kick out three. Hall got it. And Michigan State finally gets an answer. You know, Lawyer after that beautiful hesitation actually had a little runner in the lane, but he chose to turn it down to kick it out to Malik Hall for a three. So it worked out. Trevor Anderson needs some help. Michigan State had the big run. Then Wisconsin had the big run to tie us up. Trice, this time he misses, slapping the floor, but back to the line. What a Christmas day for Demetri Trice. Well, listen, you know he played football, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, so watch this. He follows his blocker. Right there, Potter just dives down the lane, opens it up on the slip, and then finishes inside. 
And the beauty about the way he's playing in the second half is that it seems relatively easy, even though Michigan State is playing outstanding defense. But he's allowing the offense to dictate where he's going to be on the court and kind of forcing the Michigan State defense to be reactive. And that's why he's able to be at ease in scoring in the second half. And he has looked at ease this year. Greg Gard agreeing with our assessment that this is the most consistent Demetri Trice has been during his time at Wisconsin. Well, it's funny how you kind of evolve into a role and you feel comfortable about who you are as a player. And when you do that, once you buy in, now it's just playing ball. And it's called mindless basketball, and that's what he's been playing thus far. Also helps when you're 24 years old like Trice <laughs> exactly. is. <laughs> that shot block, Kithier gets it back. Malik Hall, little teardrop no, and it comes down to Tyler Wall. And he's not even a young 24. He turned 24 back in May, Demetri Trice. No longer in the two, you know <laughs> what I mean? But that, that experience plays off. He's not in a rush, in particular on the offensive end. That's what makes him so efficient. And that's the 18-year-old Johnny Davis. No good offensive Guess rebound who? to Anderson. <laughs> Guess who? <laughs> Just staying steady. It's a reason why his instant energy, Trevor Anderson, is off the bench. Mm. Good move. Strong move, Tyler Wall. Yeah, that was big boy ball right there. That time he just muscled his way inside on Rocket Watts. Wisconsin back on top, and they've got the basketball again. Trice probing. One of the few things that's gone wrong for number zero. I, I tell you what, that was great help by Malik Hall, though. He kind of jabbed in between. That took away the driving lane for Trice. Now Rocket Watts. Career high seven assists already as he gives it off the hall. Trying to feed the post, and there's a kick as Wall stops play media timeout and score right now in the second half he's been all over it Greg Gard says get old stay old I don't think <laughs> I've ever seen a team with that many 22 23 24 year olds four redshirt seniors six seniors in the rotation Ball bounces around comes down to Trevor Anderson what a luxury though for Greg Gard as you said earlier I mean this team can basically Jimmy lead itself it can't it, you, you don't have to teach as much when you're a coach that has experience and you can dig into more of your offense and defensive sets than you can with a younger team because the understanding of the concepts are in place already Michigan State, they've got a few veterans out there as well, but certainly younger across the board. Bad pass there by Henry. Well, you know, that's the challenge when you have the Dukes, the North Carolinas, the Kansases at times, the Kentuckys, when you have these outstanding freshmen that come in and out, you have to reteach and continue to teach every year where when you're more established as a program with older players, you're teaching, but the concepts and the mantras and the structures are already in place. Greg Gard now in his sixth season, of course, used to be the assistant for Bo Ryan. One of those seniors off the mark there, Micah Potter. Ten minutes to play in what has been a fantastic game here at East Lansing. Foster Lawyer from the elbow. Beautiful shot that time. Little jab step inside. And sometimes, you know, we talk about the outstanding play. You don't know what to expect because we don't see college basketball on... Christmas and professionally we do that's what they do but how they've been able to react in this situation to be able to shake kind of the jitters off and play extremely well is a testament to these young men is that offensive yes they get wall for lowering the shoulder Hauser took the contact let's see if Hauser once he slid his feet right here cut off the baseline excellent anticipation <laughs> <laughs> to be able to take that and see it again. It's here. Coaches always tell you stay down, stay low. Get a little acting in there. But he timed it perfectly. He Listen, and life is all about time. It's all life is all about time. <laughs> That's exactly right. We had 10 ties, six lead changes. I have a feeling we've got more in store. Oh, yeah. 
Hauser dials it up. Yes, so the defense, and then he turns it into offense. Hauser now with 16 to lead Michigan State. Aleem Ford. He's in double figures. Hey, you know, listen, I, I tell you what, Malik Hall played great defense that time, but Aleem Ford just wanted it a little bit more. A whistle and a foul against Wisconsin. I mean, what a luxury for Tom Izzo to have for Hauser not being able to suit up. A big that can stretch the floor. And then Ford on the opposite end. Powers his way through a little shoulder left hand off the glass Back and forth we go with these two teams <laughs> Like who's gonna budge but it's gonna come down to who can make the least amount of mistakes and defensively rebound the ball and be solid Hauser oh. A foul against Ford Ford thought he had clean defense. Yeah, maybe does he get him down low with the body? Because up top, it seemed like it might have been clean. Let's take a look up top. That's a clean look and block on my end. Again, we got a different angles in the official. I thought that was a great out. That was an outstanding defensive play that time. I lean forward. Hauser 16 points. Give him 17. Uh, Tom Izzo, he was actually one of the first ones that had the idea of Christmas basketball. In fact, he said he called Juwan Howard at Michigan and said, what was it like in the NBA? And he said, we used to love it. Guys have to be on campus anyway, and that started a series of calls, and you've got four Big Ten games today. I tell you what, when I played in the league and I was, eight, I was fortunate to play on Christmas, you look forward to it. Um, there's something special about it. Too bad, you know, the fans can't be here to see it. But these two teams jumped on the opportunity to do it. Young man, these young men are providing a great show for us. Absolutely. Aleem Ford sees a baseline mm. opportunity. Ooh, missed it. But a foul on Hall. Well, outstanding recognition right here by Ford. A little pump fake. Open corner. A little get back right there for Ford on the foul that uh, <laughs> was on the previous defensive end of the court. Aleem Ford has grown so much from yeah. last year. Remember, they had Kobe King. He departed from the program, and really, Ford is the guy who stepped up in his absence. Well, you just got to be ready. You know, coaches say it all the time. Just, you know, when your number is called, you know, be prepared to step in, and Ford has done that and to take it to another level. So, again, this year's Badgers team, how far they will go? Well, he's one of the key, you know, pieces to their ultimate, ultimate success. He's got 13. Pass through the hands of Malik Hall. I gotta shoot that. And that when Hall was thinking the ball was going up, he said Henry decided to pass it at the last minute. 11 turnovers now for Michigan State. They're minus three in turnover margin this year, minus four today. Deep touch. And he has been quiet, Nate Reavers, until that moment. That's his first bucket. Yeah, that's a loud bucket because it allowed now Wisconsin to jump back in the lead. And another lead change. Hauser face up. Short from 17. Rebound forward. I would figure out from Wisconsin, maybe try to get right back on some misdirection to get Weavers right back inside. There we go. Fouls could be a story down the stretch. You got five guys with three or more. Yeah, but sometimes better late than never. Reavers not getting his touch, but right here, easy two inside with the Badgers up one. See that. By the way, that guy missed the last second shot on the other side, Travis Trice. Yeah. Got some battles back in that day. I mean, it's nothing like seeing friends who grew up kind of like with Trevor Anderson and then also, you know, Hausers. Mm -hmm. Watching guys compete when you saw them play together kind of grow up and to see the parents kind of interact and see that as well that's awesome yeah we've got a lot of storylines like that here today and the trice family the hauser connection with trevor anderson yep 65 62 wisconsin inside of seven minutes and the 149th all-time meeting between these two and that is blocked at the rim henry had it rejected 
Wisconsin trying to erase old memories. They've lost 12 straight here at the Breslin Center. Haven't won here since 2004. Fading on the baseline, Reavers, yes! And even with Trice on the bench, Wisconsin is plus seven. Well, it only takes one. Again, for Reavers to actually see a ball go in, that one, he patiently took his time, knew he had the baseline turnaround available. Beautiful. That is great. Aaron Henry dropping a dime. Well, that time the decision was there because he drew the defense. Kithier made himself available. That way you're able to get two right back. Henry, 12 points, five rebounds, three assists, three-point game. Anderson, inside, foul. Trying to take advantage of Foster Lawyer defensively. Well, and again, Anderson is not going to force a situation, but we go back to him scoring over 2,300 points. He knows how to put the ball in the basket, and right here, the middle was wide open for Anderson to kind of make his move and be able to get no contact and get himself to the free throw line. Backup point guard. We talked about the age of a lot of these guys. Not often do you have your backup point guard, a fifth year senior, replacing a fifth year senior starting point guard. And he knocks them both down, so now it's the Badgers by a handful. Well, we call it the ultimate security blanket. You know when you put him in the game, he's not going to hurt the team. Gonna run the offense and be pesty. On, you know, on the defensive end. Top of the arc, Henry. In and out. Look at Langford flying through. Another opportunity off the offensive rebound. Hauser, yes. But credit that bucket to Josh Langford. You better believe it. Langford extending the possession. But then how about Lawyer? Being able to utilize the pick and pop situation, the, the pass is right where Hauser needed to get it, and he just did the rest. Hauser's got 20, four away from his career high. Here's Davison again, crafty mm -hmm. in the lane. We've seen him post up a couple of times. A patent trademark of this Wisconsin offense guards on the baseline in the post up position. Hauser thought about it. Henry wow. to Kithier. And Kithier had it blocked, but also a foul on Johnny Davis. Offensive rebound. Side pick and roll. Presents yourself. Splash and then inside. That time. Jonathan Davis had to come all the way from the corner. Kithier at the line. Both teams, we said, near the top of the league in free throw shooting, and they've both been pretty good here. Michigan State, 8 of 10. Wisconsin, 15 of 18. Well, how many times have we seen it come down to the end of the game where the makes and misses determine the outcome? And coaches always say, listen, take your free throw serious. Put yourself in a situation where you feel a little tired, so you feel like you're in an in-game situation when you need to step up and knock them in. In fact, Wisconsin's made all nine of their free throws here in the second half. Johnny Davis backing down Lawyer. He took him right to the rim. Not settling for jump shots that time. Davis using that size to get inside. And then the miscue, and we've got our final media timeout. What a Christmas present for you in a back and forth game. And look at this. The freshman amongst all the old guys take it into the rim. What an outstanding game between two teams. Again, Michigan State trying to recover from the loss. Wisconsin still trying to keep the momentum going. In particular on the road, a tough place like you talked about. For them, the Badgers to win in the past. Haven't won here since 2004. Ball Thanks comes down. Yeah, again, he keeps it alive. And that leads to a block. Reavers came in. The all-time shot block leader at Wisconsin does it again. Well, I mean, great drive. That was, a, I, I thought, heads-up play by Watts to drive the ball to the basket that time. But Reavers just was 
the size play a factor in that able to get the uh, block shot. His 159th block, Ethan Happ had 154. Dimitri tries back out there. Late in the shot clock, he'll rise and fire. Too much, rebound to Hauser. Could have an advantage right here for Michigan State. A little five on four. There it is. Henry, offensive foul. And look who took it. Brad Davison, that's what he's known for. So Wisconsin will get it back with 310 remaining in East Lansing. Be separated from his parents. That, that's the definition of house divided right there. <laughs> like, listen, you go cheer for Michigan State down there. But you know what's interesting, too, because the parents had to change alignment. Think about it. For years, they cheered for Michigan State. Yes. You don't lose that all of a sudden. <laughs> but now, because of Dimitri, you just go against the grain, I guess. Yeah, shifted focus <laughs> a little right. bit. Nate Reavers. In the paint, fading away, getting the bounce. Six of the last eight field goals for Wisconsin, Jimmy, have come in the paint. Yeah, well, attention to detail, knowing that you can get Reavers inside deep and then he can finish for you. What a luxury to have. Langford, good drive, but misses it. And now, Wisconsin, they've got Michigan State where they want him up six of the ball inside two and a half. And those are the tough earned buckets that you need and you need to have a player that can get those for you especially a post player that can get deep down inside and Reavers is able to provide that back to Reavers he's gonna slowly take Kithier into the post fade away and he airballed it no foul there Henry tangled up with Davison when it comes down <clears throat> to the end of the game Sometimes you just need we always talk about the three-point shot and how it has an effect on the game But when you see close games. It's those two-point baskets that ultimately carry a team over the top Reavers all eight points here in the second half inside of two minutes Spartans need a bucket Henry trying to get it to Hauser Rocket Watts floater no Tapped out though by Kithier. Ford saving it to Demetri Trice. Outlet up ahead. And Johnny Davis lays it in. Wisconsin's up eight. And how about Davis looking over his left shoulder, knowing Hauser is coming? Took that extra dribble to gather himself to maybe absorb some of the contact that may be coming. Largest lead of the game, and Tom Izzo takes a timeout. Well, again. Hustle plays. Well, Tom Izzo is hoping maybe he could light a victory cigar, but it looks like it might be great guard unless the Spartans can go on a run here in the final 127. Well, you got to score quick, which smart, <laughs> score smart, but you don't need a three. If you can get something driving to the basket right away, do it. That'll allow you to set your defense to see if you can create an opportunity to get a steal. Quickly, a shout out to our hardworking crew as well yes. with us working. Yes. To, since early this morning setting up yesterday away from their families on the holiday That's a foul inside and a lean forward If that was a turnover it may have been ball game instead It'll be free throws. Yeah, and the good thing the clock stop How's it it is able to knock down two again now? You're able to set your defense to see if you can create a turnover Again, Wisconsin is very good with handling the basketball and pressure you know, we saw those early turnovers before, but down the stretch of the game, they rarely kind of beat themselves. And Hauser from Stevens Point, Wisconsin, against his home state school, 21 points, seven rebounds, and a couple of assists. Give him 22. Spartans back within six. Backcourt pressure trying to get it to Trice, and they do. Watts will trace it. Watts falls down, so now you got a five on four. And Trice takes it right inside and draws the foul against Kithier. But Watts is shaken up. Jimmy, I think he may have thought it was an illegal screen. Yeah, he may have got caught with a knee. Let's take a look right here. On the pick coming back right there. Now, Reavers is standing still. You know, just get caught. And how about the play by Trice? Mm -hmm. you know, making the right decision. Get himself to the basket and picked up the foul, but not able to knock in the first free throw. 
And an uncharacteristic bad miss there from Demetri Trice, who's 72 percent. Twenty-five points for Trice, six off his career high. Seven-point game. Rocket Watts. Wide pass. Langford handles it. Hauser down the lane. Off Ooh. balance. Up and in and the foul. And when he went up, it looked awkward. Oh, yes. I, I, you know, but not settling for the three. He knew his man was closing out to himself. So smart. Hauser hit the second free throw, so a four-point game. And again, a lean forward just fouled out for the Badgers. But this is where it pays to have a fifth-year senior point guard at 24 years of age, is all a lean forward can do now is look on. And that time, the Michigan State bench not extremely happy with the decision right there by Watts to foul because it's still a two-possession mm -hmm. game. Kind of wanted to play that possession on, on the defensive end and not give tries an opportunity to get to the free throw line this is where wisconsin butters its bread they were 15 of 15 against nebraska tuesday at the line and they are 17 of 21 here today free throws can win you games they also can cost you when you're not able to capitalize and right now the badgers sit in a pretty good position Going really comfortable at the free throw line as we speak. Yeah, jinxed him. Jinxed so. him. <laughs> Just five points. There's plenty of time. Aaron Henry, wild shot. Rebound yes, to Langford. Blocked by Reavers. Wow. Two outstanding plays. One by Langford just to get, be able to get the rebound, keep the play alive. But it was Reavers once again inside. All 6 11 of them timed it up perfectly. Just when you think you got it, you make a play. If you're laying for try to get it up quick. That wingspan able to negate that shot. The Wisconsin block king, Nate Reavers, gets number 160 on his career second today, and it's a big one. Oh. Demetric Trice, though, he's been the guy that struggled at the line. He's missed three of his last five, but he does knock that one down. Still a two-possession game. Hauser. Driven off the three-point line and fouled by Davison. Davison was pleading for a tie-up, but he's not going to get that call. Well, I thought Hauser was going to fire that three. I guess he felt he didn't have enough separation. You know, I like the effort by Davidson that time, but you don't want to stop the clock when you're in this situation. If they get to two, they get to two. Uh, at least you're able to, you know, kind of get the ball in bounds and you know you'll get fouled. What you don't want to do is continue to stop the clock to give this Michigan State team more time. Joey Hauser, new career high, 26 points. I think you're going to be saying that a few times for this young man <laughs> during the course of this year with Michigan State. He also has seven rebounds. So the lead back to four. As Tom Izzo is going to bring Gabe Brown back in and take out Hauser. It's important, too, for Reavers, who's taking the ball out, not to make a long pass cross court. Take the ball to your teammate. Try to stay out the corners if you can. And Reavers is going to have to take a timeout. Wisconsin did have three left. Now Greg Gard has two remaining. It's true. This Big Ten is as strong maybe as it's ever been. There's not going to be any easy ones this year. No, not at all. Reavers still having trouble. Oh. Gets it into Davison. Well, Davison better watch swinging those elbows, but he gets it off to Reavers. And wisely a timeout because they were just a few seconds from a backcourt violation. Easy layup. So if you're a Wisconsin Badger player, you have to make yourself available to Reavers to get the ball in bounds because he can't move out of his spot. Reavers getting it into Potter, and there's the foul. 
And Micah Potter, just like pretty much everybody else in a red uniform, he's good at the line, 85%. But he has not attempted a foul shot today. Each team now one timeout. Eight points for Potter, who came in the team's leader at 13.4 a game. But he missed it. You always give yourself a chance, even with the best free throw shooters. That's why you like to extend the game out. Okay, you may be 75, 80% through the course of the game, but in some late game situations, as we see, some of the better free throw shooters can give one back to you. Does Michigan State need a three if he makes no. this, Jimmy? No. Because no. it's still a two possession game. So if you can get a quick two, again, extend the game and force Wisconsin have to close you out from the free throw line. Potter out, wall back in. Notice Henry bringing it up. Davison forces him to pick it up near the timeline. Henry trying to get it out to Hauser on a pick and pop. Hauser slipped and threw it away. Such a great game for Joey Hauser. Career high 27 points, but a mistake at the most inopportune of times. So tough. Knowing that his man is going to close out to take away the three and just lost his footing and Watts kind of anticipating that Hauser was going to get by, relieved himself from the corner. 13 turnovers now for Michigan State, and Potter will go back to the other end. And Wisconsin 13 and a half seconds away from finally getting a victory here in East Lansing. It's been a while. Well, and here's the thing. The 13 turnovers are you know, one below what Michigan State has, but it's the timing of those turnovers. Right when Michigan State had some momentum in the second half, they had a couple possessions in a row where the turnovers happened. So it stymied whatever progress they made and allowed Wisconsin right back in the game. So you may see the number, but it doesn't really tell the story of how that really affected the momentum of Michigan State. And now a big free throw here. If he hits this, it's all but over. It would make it a three-possession game. See Trevor Anderson. Celebration starting to commence over there on the sideline for Wisconsin. And Potter does get both, and now the Spartans in trouble. Mentioned the Michigan State turnovers, Jimmy. Wisconsin, they've got seven of them, but remember they had four in the first three minutes. That's right. Henry. Hero step, missed it. Rebound, Wisconsin, and one more foul. And the Badgers are going to drop the Spartans to 0-2 in Big Ten play. What a win for Greg Gard and Tom Izzo. And don't worry, Spartan fans. They're going to be just fine this year. But Wisconsin, who earlier in the year was ranked number four, fell to Marquette. Now they're number nine, and they figure to maybe make a bump in the rankings after this victory. Tough, tough conference. You know it's going to be back and forth. A lot of factors are going to be different this year. Again, you're going to lean back on the veteran leadership and the experience of this Wisconsin team to be able to come into an environment. You know, it's a little bit different, but it's still the Breslin Center. Still, This is still Michigan State. Hitting at the back half of that, of the uh, Big Ten standards. But the way it's going right now, maybe not. But... The more teams you have an opportunity to get in the tournament, the better. Final five seconds. Watts will stop and pop. He couldn't even get it off. In fact, one final turnover. Now 14 of them right at their season average. Wisconsin scaring off the ghosts of Breslin Pass. They get their first win in East Lansing since 2004. And they put up 85 points on Michigan State. So the Badgers 2-0 in Big Ten play. Michigan State 0-2.